today we're going to continue to talk about winter and winter energy and how to support your your energy during this time of the year and we're going to focus also about on food that are nourishing in the winter uh, i just wanted to mention in chinese medicine and qigong the winter time is is about uh, storing energy is about hibernating and about uh, 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 really the, the the function of the body is to store energy for the spring to be very active and to do to launch new projects really to give you energy so it's it's almost like when you sleep at night you really need to sleep good and deep and only if you really sleep good and deep then in the morning you can you can have a lot of energy and be happy and go and do things and so the winter is, is really about storing energy and, and filling up your reservoirs. So in terms of, in, in, uh, in terms of that, let me just change the, see here. So in terms of that, that, we, that that's what we're looking to do. Uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that, what it means, uh, what it means in food, what it means in, in just a lifestyle in general. And this is, and also I just wanted to kind of like congratulate, congratulate us for making it that far. <laughs> so we can, we can say happy new year. You know, it's been, it's been a really challenging time for a lot of people and for, um, you know, the pandemic and, and there's a lot of things were going on in the last couple of years. So congratulations for us <laughs> to make it up this far. Hi, Lucy. I, I see you join us. Uh, good to see you, too. It's been a while. All right. So let's start with a little bit of meditation, if you will. Uh, allow yourself to, uh, to close your eyes and, and connect with your body. So as you close your eyes, as you sit here now, see what is the first place you go to when I say go, go inwardly. Where in your body it means to go inwardly for you. And as we go into our body, as we're feeling the form and shape of your body, we are starting with the, with the feet and the sit bones resting on the chair. And see if you can allow your body to give way to gravity. See if you can Acknowledge that the earth is holding you beneath, feeling the weight of the body pressing on the earth, pressing on the chair, and the chair pressing on the earth. So feeling that weight, that density of body, and feeling the support of the earth, and align yourself with gravity. The way we align ourselves with gravity is that we are finding a posture that is feels it feels that we, we are upright, we are erecting the spine. At the same time, we're also relaxing any muscular tension anywhere in the body. Gravity is a, is a very strong force, is a yin force. Uh, yeah, it's a strong force that holds it, that holds everything together. And in Qigong, when we align ourselves with a bigger energy field around us, we actually have, we are harnessing the power of that energy field. So if we are connecting with the earth, we're feeling, we align ourselves with the earth, we become the earth. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, in martial art, we practice a lot. I remember a very old master, 60, 70 year old uh, master that uh, was, nobody could move him because he was he couldn't be pushed because he was just feeling the earth chi he allowed himself to merge with the earth so it's very inspiring to see people with really uh, a lot of strength or a lot of uh, uh, cultivated a lot of chi that you can uh, can feel these practices that we do in qigong they're actually uh you know, if you if you do them long enough, you really practice them. You're becoming really strong, and and really powerful. So, align yourself, feel the earth beneath you, the vastness of the earth, and relax all your body tension into the earth. Whatever visualization works for you, on that. 
merge yourself with the earth. Nice, and let's, uh, let's come into the heart center. Feel the heart center. At the same time you feel the heart center, feel the fingertips and the toes. So this is a technique that proven to bring you into heart coherency, into a, a deep relaxation, feeling the heart center, the same time feeling the extremities, the tips of the extremities. toes and fingertips. Nice, slowly opening your eyes. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you so much for joining. My name is Ellie Cohen. I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. And I'm teaching um, now mostly online and uh, about four classes, three of the four classes a week and doing workshops and uh, different programs. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited to share with you some tips about how to store more energy. And, and last time we kind of continued this, the talk uh, was last time and we're continuing it. And I wanted to really put more attention about on, um, on, on diet too this time, because uh, I think somebody mentioned, started to mention some stuff. Uh, let me see if I can uh, connect myself so I don't lose battery uh, from my computer. <laughs> Talking about storage and storing energy. <laughs> so um, the kidney are considered to be the battery of the body. And, uh, and, and uh, so really the, the battery is the kidney. And when, whenever we wanna, uh, oh, hold on. I, I think we need to move here, sorry. Okay, here we got, we got the battery. All right, now we're good. All right, all right. Now you see my kitchen. <laughs> so, how do we store energy? So it's it's kind of like what we talked in the beginning. The 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 kidney is is seen as the battery, and the winter time is time to fill up the battery. Sleeping, uh, having a good night's sleep is very important. Um, being close to water is very important. Being uh, walk in nature slowly is very important. Everything is is a little bit more slower. In the winter, everything we're doing a little bit more slower. It doesn't mean that we are not, uh, we cannot have like people that like to exercise or to like to cultivate strength. Actually, the winter uh, qigong practices are the strongest. It's the hardest to do. So if you want to uh, kind of experience that, just come to some of our classes now in this part of the the season, and we're going to work more on lower back issues, more lower back in qigong especially on the Thursday noon class. And, um, and because everything is slower is actually uh, cultivating deeper strength. So the strength, uh, the energy goes to the center. How do we guide the energy into the center of the body? By not moving very fast, by doing everything slow. And the most yin type of practice in the winter is holding postures. So holding posture, so if we're talking about in, in terms of movement practice, holding posture like universal embrace or different postures for a longer period of time, uh, you developing uh, strength in your ligaments and bones. Yeah, and the bones are the most yin part of the body. Even more yin than that is the bone marrow. Yeah, so if you just like do a cut in the middle, you would see the outer layer is the skin, then the muscle, then the bone, and the bone marrow is the most yin part, or most internal. 
So the, the time to, when we want to store energy, we want to strengthen the bones. We want to strengthen the bone marrow. And that's why standing practices, slow movement practices, and practices that um, um, move like water in a certain way, we starting kind of like from the tailbone, we start to introduce it, introduce the crane practices in our classes and the crane practices in, in the Thursday noon class. And if you're in Chi Breaks, you can, you can also find a recording. It all starts from the tailbone. It all starts from the tailbone and there's a, a certain undulation of the whole body that works on a very deep layer of the joints and the ligaments. So this is from the movement practice. So the, everything is slower. It's a very thicker. The way we move is thicker or we actually don't move at all. We just stand. And that cultivates, you know, just hold your hands like this for a period of time and, and you'll feel your bones, you'll feel your ligaments starting to work. And there's a way that we do that. There is a way to relax muscular tension. <laughs> a lot of time when we starting to do Qigong practices for the winter, people use their muscle. And the muscle, actually, you don't want to use them. You want to relax the muscle in these form of Qigong practices. You want it to actually be very soft. And then the energy can penetrate beyond the muscle into the bones and the ligaments. So from a, from a Qigong movement type of practice, the winter would strengthen a little deeper layers of your body. And there's a lot of practices that would be target specifically for bone and bone marrow. And in terms of uh, lifestyle, we want to sleep good. We want to be close to water or hike close to water. Um, uh, water is very relaxing, is very healing, is very calming. Uh, in terms of food, we want to eat food that help us um, maintain our, um, our chi to flow. So uh, refrain from spicy food <laughs> is very important. Uh, not eat a lot of salt or really uh, this, what does salt, what it does is that it slower down the blood flow. <laughs> so actually, whenever you're cold and you're eating salty food is actually is retaining water, salt retain water and also um, it actually make the blood a little more sluggish. <laughs> so salty food would be uh, not advised in the winter, a lot of salt in the winter. And also uh, raw, raw vegetables, a lot of salads are not advised. So we don't want to eat cold things. We want to eat more warm things. Um, and, uh, and bone marrow would be very good to even eat. Yeah, so bone broth would be very good. Somebody mentioned that last uh, last she talk. Yes, yeah, so bone bone broth would be very very good to to eat in the in the winter. To drink warm food, cooked food, root vegetables are very good. All the root vegetable. So if you think about the winter, it's kind of a fun thing if you uh, to explain it from a ch like so you can understand it. So the the root is under the surface, right? And under the surface of the, like potatoes, garlic, uh, yeah, garlic, onion. So garlic and onion are very good because they expel, uh, uh, they expel uh, uh, toxins out of the body too. So that's very good for winter. Also potatoes, yams are very good. Sweet potatoes are very good. So everything that under the surface. So the winter is a dark time. So, <laughs> Yeah, in the in the so let's say in the summer we want to eat the flour, yeah, because what's what's the what's the um, yeah, and then in the spring we want to eat the greens, the leaves. So if you think about how a plant grow, it shoots up in the spring and then there's a lot of green, yeah, and then in the in the summer the flower comes. So the fruit, like a lot of fruit, like watermelon, things like that, cucumber, a very good tomato. <laughs> But in the winter, everything is under the surface. It's like the, the yin part of the plant. The yin part of the plant, ginger, is very good. Ginger is very good for the winter. It's warming. And also, it's also a root. 
Uh, so that would be very good for you in the winter to eat like root vegetables, um, warm soups, uh, bone marrow, that are very good for your chi. Also very good for your chi is to um, uh, reduce sugars and uh, work on more fats. Now, don't, don't like go and eat uh, deep fried stuff. <laughs> That's not very good for your spleen. So you want to eat like, let's say nuts are very good. Avocado, like healthy fats. Healthy fats are yin nourishing. So that would be also very good before sleep. So if you want to kind of like uh, subside cra uh, food cravings, avocado is very good. Fats are very good. And they feel very uh, satisfying very filling, but they're not agitating. Yes, yeah, sweet is going to be agitating. So we don't want to eat sweet before bed or so much in the in the winter, even though people love to eat sweet in the winter. <laughs> Everybody loves to eat sweet in the winter, like, uh, right? But uh, it's, um, it's better to it's better to because we crave sugar because it's cold, we crave calories. We crave calories and the way to, um, to handle that in order not to, because in the winter we're not as active. And in order to kind of subside that is to actually uh, more connect with fats, like eat avocado, eat, um, eat nuts, you know, even oils that are healthy. Like if it's a very good oil, uh, you know, extra virgin oil, that, that could be very good for you. Walnuts, you know, a lot of omega is very good for in inflammatory. That would be very, very good for, for the um, for the winter. So, uh, in terms of let's see what else. So we we don't want to do too salty food. Uh, now, caffeine is taxing on the kidney. So the the sensitive organ in the winter is the kidneys, uh, and we don't want to tax them. So if you a person that really love coffee. And especially people like it in the winter, isn't it true? Because we're depressed and we want to, hey, let's, uh, <laughs> let's get some energy. <laughs> we want to, but think about it. The body knows what it's doing. This is a time to nourish. This is a time to nourish your chi. This is a time to rest. And this is a time to, uh, you know, it's very conducive to meditation. It's very conducive to internal practices. So a lot of people get depression because of that. So it's interesting, right? So we, we, we want to get more energy. So we drink coffee, we eat sugar, all these things that actually not nourishing our chi are not good for storing energy, what we said in the beginning. We want to store energy for the spring. So we have a tendency to do that. So instead, why don't we connect with our heart, with love? Yeah, so meet, meeting with friends, uh, meeting with friends, loving, you know, so that that would warm up the heart. That would actually, if you have tendency for depression or for uh, slugginess, go to a movie with some friends, sit together and uh, um, invite people over for dinner, um, hug people, make love. You know, these things are better than uh, the coffee. So if you can actually... Uh, a refrain from coffee during the during this period of time during the cold period of time and find other ways to engage with lifting up your chi based on heart connecting with the heart that would be better <laughs> so you know i'm just here to suggest things you can take it or leave it <laughs> so uh so so this is uh this is kind of a, a a more like a synopsis. Let's see what else. So salty food we talked about, raw food, refrain from raw food, more cooked food is better for you. You, you really, uh, ginger, sweet potatoes are very good. Kidney beans are very good in Chinese medicine for, especially for the kidney, kidney beans. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's a good kind of, um, that's a good kind of uh, overview of uh, how to store energy in terms of a movement practice. And, and you are welcome to come and join uh, the classes online and to, to see how we can actually cultivate a lot of strength in this season from just 
being relaxed and soft. And, um, and also from more like a food, a lifestyle, you know, you don't want to go out and party all night. That's a big no, no <laughs> in the winter. Everybody goes and have, especially New Year's Eve, there's to tons of parties. <laughs> so the way I combat that, yeah, everybody goes out and have parties and I already got invited to some parties. I combat that. I, I actually decided, and usually the parties in New Year's Eve are very crowded and expensive and not really fulfilling. Not for me. I don't know. Everybody's their own thing. But the way I do it is I, 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 I do this day, New Year, New Year Eve and New Year Day, as a self-care. Yeah, so I go, I, I sit in a hot spring, I, I get massages, and I do a whole, a whole two days of self-care. And I start the new year Eve, uh, the new year, instead of being over, over uh, like, um, you know, from the last night or party all night, <laughs> so instead of that, I'm actually refreshed and starting the new year with thinking about what do I want to project into the new year. And from a place of relaxation, of, of after I, I got massage, after I, I, I sat in a hot tub or something like that, a hot spring. So I just wanted to invite you to, uh, maybe change for every, anybody that listens uh, their new year year. Maybe, maybe you can do something like that. Maybe you can do something more nourishing and start the year uh, really fresh and really um, with more mindfulness. <laughs> so that's just a suggestion. Uh, there's always a way to work around and still have fun and still enjoy your life. Um, you know, health and healing is not supposed to be like limiting it's actually it's actually it's it feels good when you feel good energy in your body when you're doing yes yeah, you can be creative and finding ways to actually change your lifestyle in the winter to actually have it more fun than than what 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 uh some habits that are not helpful uh so anyway <laughs> with that said i'm just going to open it for a question or two wow we we got there's already half hour here so let's open it uh, i just want to hear if anybody wants to hey yeah bart this is i always like to hear you bart so go ahead what what do you what do you have going okay uh my question is about yin and yang uh -huh. So I still struggle a little, little bit now and then with yin and yang, what it means. Uh, so I thought that yin is more the soft kind of energy and the yang is hard, harder. But bone marrow is connected to yin, but it is the hardest part of the body. So that's difficult to understand. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, yeah. Why, why do you think it's the hardest part of the body? Oh, no, no, I'm not the bone marrow, but the bone, the, the bone. Yeah, oh, so, <clears throat> yeah, what are the bones? Are they yin or, or are they yang? They, they are yin, yeah. So they're internal. So yin is internal. So like, let's say if you cut like the hand like that and you just see a, a cross section of your, of your leg or of your, so the outer layer would be the skin. So that's the most young part. That's the most external part. And then the yin part is the most internal. So it would be the bone marrow. Uh, the bone marrow is the, the deepest part. And if you talk about the deepest part on earth, the, the, the oceans, the depth of the ocean is the, uh, the, the most yin place. The earth is yin. Uh, and somebody told me, but the center of the earth is very hot. <laughs> and that's the most yin. And that's true, too. You know, think about like you go into all the way to the depth of the ocean, like miles and miles down. It's so cold. It's the cold that very little creature can live it. And underneath the layer of the earth, below the earth, there's a hot center of magma, <laughs> you know, and it's still very cold underneath the ocean so it's just interesting it's amazing it's amazing that uh uh 
the planet we live in and, and how how much uh, cool we have in the ocean even though underneath it there's a lot of heat in the center of the earth a lot of magma and sometimes it goes up in the volcanoes <laughs> and it's so hot but that's uh that's that's yin and yang the hot and the cold so but in the body it would be the most yin place is the most internal place and it goes with cool and hot and and soft and hard true uh i don't know if that makes sense yes yeah. yes yes it's, it's thank enough. you is thank there you. anybody else that wants to sh share or just ask um before we close okay so let's do a closing meditation and you know, next week I'd like to talk about manifesting. We are going to do a workshop on manifesting using Qigong, Qigong technology. Uh, so if you can save January twenty second weekend, um, we're going to have a, a, a workshop about how to work with our mind and body to bring into life what we want in life. And that's a that's a that's a topic that I'm very interested in for a long time and i've practiced i did many many workshops and and webinars on it uh and uh, it would be fun to uh because sometimes we you know we we go into our day or we we want something but uh just set up a time for it and to really brainstorm and to really see what is our heart desire where is our block it blocks you know find out talk with your mind and really do a lot of work around that with movement, uh, I thought that would be really fun and would be really powerful. So uh, so save that date. And uh, next week, we're going to talk a little bit about that. OK, so good to see you all. Let's do a little a closing meditation. Let's hold hands here together in front of our heart. So right in front of our heart center. And uh, close your eyes and just connect with this chi ball, the tension, the energy between the two hands. And right here, when we do that, yeah, so the fingertips would point to each other almost, yeah? And that's even more powerful than putting the hands together touching them together because here we are actually connecting the the formless and the form the form is the hands the heart and the formless is the energy your desires under the things that are, we don't put attention to usually the form and the formless and that's encompassing we call chi and as we pulse this chi ball you, you may close your eyes sometimes you feel more chi when you close your eyes because there's less distraction you can focus on the chi here and focus on what gifts you want to get for the new years what gifts you would like to receive. And these gifts can be form or formless. <laughs> it could be happiness, or it could be fulfillment, or it could be a new car. <laughs> and see these uh, energies in this ball. These gifts are in this ball. Bring them to a space that is in between your hands. Let's take this ball of chi and put it on the stomach, in the stomach, hands on navel. And digest this information of what we want for the new year and then ask yourself the question after we put the hands here 
and the energy is already circulating inside, what would it take to receive these gifts? What can I do to support this change? What can I do that I that is outside of what I usually do? That will make me get this. Life is always about growth and transformation, and it doesn't matter how old or how young you are. And whenever there's transformation, whenever there's desire, whenever we are striving to get out of our comfort zone into something else, this is what we are calling healing and health. The chi is flowing when you are, when you make it flow. So from here, from that place, Let's open the hands, open the eyes. Beautiful guys. So thank you so much for joining me on this little tour. <laughs> and uh, I hope you have a wonderful New Year's and a wonderful New Year's Eve, whatever you decide to do that day. And I'll see you in class on Thursday. If you'd like to discover some of these things we talked about, uh, come and join us. Good to see you guys. Bye Happy now. New Year, everybody. Happy Good New health. Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Be safe. Year. Be safe, health and happiness. Peace on earth. Yeah. Goodwill Peace towards men. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good to see you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>